This is the Link Station N1. This is my third variation of uh, Link Plus's uh, NAS offerings. I really like this one. I've been using the one that's similar to this with the different number of bays um, as our media server in the living room and I've been very, very happy with it. So I thought I'd get this one. I want this one for my laser files, my 3D printing files, etc. I've had this out here for about a month now, but I did not have the budget to put enough drives in it. Uh, it does take the M.2s that have different pin configurations than some of them. It can do the one style, but not the other style. I had a bunch of the ones that were the other style, so I had to buy some more and I just had to wait to be able to afford that. I will go ahead and show you this, how it's kind of set up, but let me talk about it for a second. This comes with 16 gigs of RAM that is non-upgradable. It is built in MMC, so it's ready to go out of the box. It supports four M.2 NVMe drives for speed plus two SATA bays. And then I have something in there for the SSD. Honestly, I forget what, what, what I had that fit. And then I have two more uh, crucial P310s that we'll go ahead and put in there and then change some things around. This does come with a year of the Unraid license, like all of theirs. It has uh, two and a half gig ethernet. This thing is really quiet. The fan is not loud on it at all. I may actually swap this one out for the one in the living room because it runs a little bit quieter than the one in the living room. And the fan doesn't bother my wife, but sometimes it bothers me on the one in the living room. And I don't mind that one out here. So we may play a little switcheroo at some point, but not today. Uh, with the RAM and the Unraid, you can do, you know, something like Docker apps. You can do flexible storage, uh, Plex media server, Jellyfin, anything like that. But I'm just using this for 3D printer files and then stuff like SVGs and, and similar uh, laser files for my 3D printers and lasers out here in the garage. Let me go ahead and I guess it would help if I plugged the internet back into it and turned it on, huh? All right, so here we are with Unraid. I just have this one set for tower.local. Uh, I have my other ones named, but not this one. So we can come in here and you can see I have these two one terabyte Toshiba hard drives. Uh, I just bought those from one of the companies that sells used server drives. Uh, I've never been disappointed with any other drives. And then I have a Peladin 512 gig um, M.2 in there. So we're gonna put two more in there. I guess I'll only have three of the four bays populated, but that's just what I could afford right now. That'll still give us a good idea. So yeah, if we come out here to the dashboard, Unraid's pretty great. I do like other things about uh, proprietary manufacturers, dashboards, but Unraid's pretty good. A lot of people like it. You could put something else on here if you want. It just has a little thumb drive in there and that's what the operating system goes on. So, you know, you could always change it. I know Jeff Gearling uh, changed his. He got this one or the one that I have my Plex on. They sent him one and he put something else on it, but I just use the Unraid. I'm quite happy with it. So everything looks pretty good here. Uh, so let me go ahead and start the array here. Proceed. Give that a second. That'll take a little bit. You can see I last checked for parity 23 days ago. So like I said, I've had this about a month and I've had it off for most of that time just because I transferred a bunch of files to it and then I haven't really printed anything from my library and I haven't had a laser hooked up at all in that time. And I will probably not put it in a RAID configuration. You can, there's a bunch of options that are real easy to do. I am just using this more as almost a, a direct attached storage instead of network attached storage. It's doing a parity check. That's gonna take a little bit of time and we're gonna put some new drives in here in a second. So we will go ahead and stop that. But I just wanted to kind of show you things in here. Let me go into my shares and then, you know, I should be able to access it in Explorer now. Come down to Tower, Files, and you can see my files are in here. Pretty great. Uh, one thing I will say is it takes me a while to transfer stuff to this because I am using um, Powerline Ethernet to get out here to the garage because obviously it doesn't have Wi-Fi or anything built in and I don't have wired internet out here because I don't really have wired internet in the house because we have Starlink. I do have two ethernet coming off of that, one to feed the power line and then one to feed my uh, gaming PC. But other than that, I just don't really have wired internet. So this is what we're using. And you can just see, I have all of my files in here. It's nice and responsive. So the nice thing here about Unraid is you've got, you know, uh, some pretty robust settings and everything. You can check for updates. You've got plugins. I will say the time seems to be off because it thinks we've been up for seven hours and 53 minutes and we've been up for like five minutes but that's an Unraid thing, not necessarily the Link Station. Overall, I'm just really happy with these things. 
So let's get some more storage in here. I did set one of those drives up as a cache. We're gonna change all of this. I'm gonna lose all my files on here, but that's not a big deal because they're on another NAS of mine. And I'll just transfer them back over. Not, not a big deal at all. So let's go ahead and crack this thing open and we'll take a look at it. So it is powered down. I will go ahead and unplug the ethernet and the power there. And it's pretty simple. You've got a little door here on the front, just like on their other variations of this. You have the quick releases for the um, hard drives, if I can remember how they work here. Okay, yeah. So you lift this up and then they just come out. Now I will say, um, you have to be a little bit careful with these. They're not gonna like me saying this, but they did send me an engineering sample for the last one and the door actually came off. Uh, Jeff Gearling had his fixed when he got one and they told me they fixed it, but I'm just kind of paranoid about it now. So just be a little gentle when you're pulling those out. Um, this is just plastic here. I wish it was metal. And then there's your hard drive. So I have these one terabyte um, Toshiba's in there. And then let's see, make sure I do this the right way. Yeah, do it like that. Oop. There we go. <coughs> and there's hot swap like that. And then you do have the USB-C there. Now here on the back, again, the SSDs are pretty hot swap. Uh, sometimes these really want to stick because of the pad. I don't have any drives in that one, so they did not want to stick. But this one, I usually have to kind of pry out. So we do have that one pellet in in there that's taken from a, a mini PC. Not necessarily the greatest SSD, but it works in a pinch and that's 512. So then I have these two other 512s that we can get in there. Sadly, uh, the only other drive I have that'll fit in here is a one terabyte and I actually need it for something else today. So I don't really want to put that in here. Uh, of course they have these on here with the craziest amount of tape. I'm just gonna rip into the box. Hopefully I don't have to return these SSDs. Oh, good gravy. Let me go get a box knife and cut these open. I just saw some poop from a 3D printer on the ground and totally thought it was a giant bug. It's way too cold for the bugs to be active. We get really big beetles here in the desert and they're kind of menacing, even though they usually just run away. So, these crucials are actually gonna be way better than this Peloton. Uh, after this video, I may take that Peloton out and just use these crucials. But for now... So here's what I was talking about. The other M.2s I have have uh, another notch over here. Those will not work in here. You have to have the ones that just have the one notch. Um, I do wish they would fix that in a future version so you have more versatility, but you know, it is what it is. So we're gonna, we'll just pop these two over here together. So you just pop it in there. You lift this switch here because these are, you know, toolless and I don't, there we go. I didn't have it in all the way. There we go. There's that one. We'll do the same with this. And let's see, like that. Let's go ahead and get them seated in there nice and snug. If I could see and my hands weren't freezing because it's like 50 Fahrenheit out here. There we go. Make sure I did peel the stuff off both. Yeah, I did. Go ahead and get that in there. And like, that's how easy it is to install your drives in these. I, I really like that, um, especially with the SSDs, because it's just like, there's one way to do it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to like look inside the thing. And then back here, you do have an HDMI, so you can access it. You have two uh, Blues Watt 3.0, I think, USB-A's, and then you have that USB-C on the front as well. The whole bottom is nice and metal. It kind of acts as a heat sink. It's pretty thick, as you can tell. The top is a little bit thinner, but, uh, Awesome, I think metal, it may be plastic. I'm pretty sure it's metal, but it definitely is a different kind of metal than the bottom here. This feels like just a nice heavy aluminum plate, acts as a good heat sink. So I'm gonna plug the ethernet back in, if I could hold on to it. My hands are really cold, guys. Oh, we actually came up faster that time. It must have had an improper shutdown. So the array is stopped. Let's go in here to main and then So yep, there we go. It sees the two uh, crucials, the P310s. 
they're not assigned to anything. So right now I have that Peladin as assigned as the cache. I think I will leave it as the cache and then I will add. That's really easy. We just come to tools and then we go to new config. Preserve current assignments, none. Yes, I want to do this. Let me just double check that there's nothing on here that I don't already have elsewhere. Yeah, we are totally cool here. So apply. Give me one second. I, I think I'm not doing this quite right. I, again, I've not done this a lot. Okay, there we go. So we're not gonna use anything for parity. We're gonna put the Toshiba's on here. Man, my hand is getting really cold out here, guys. Crazy, just like 50 degrees. I think it was 20 out here as cold as my right hand is. So there we go. We're gonna skip parity because I'm just gonna use this more as direct attached storage, as I said. But we could come in here and do RAID. It's just I don't have SSDs that are a terabyte. So we would be going off 500 gigabytes and we'd be wasting some of those two hard drives. Ideally, you would want all the drives the same size and everything. But this is just what I'm doing. Array missing devices. Oh, so, all right, there we go. I just had to change the pool devices back to zero for that add pool that I did. I first did the drop down for whatever reason zero wasn't there. So I just switched tabs, came right back and then it was there. All right, so I was having a little issue with those drives. I've never like added drives in Unraid on the fly. So I needed to come in here and I think set these to XFS. <laughs> Both open. And now we'll go back to main. Yeah, okay, I think we're good now. So we'll go ahead and Start the array. I, I really don't understand Unraid. Um, I am fairly new to NASA's. I just got some in 2025, started messing with them. So I'm really new to all of this, but I think that should have got us where we wanted to be. Nope, unmountable, wrong, or no file system. So I need to figure this out. Oh, here we go. Format or create a file system on all unmountable disks. Okay, so it's hiding right there. Format, good to know. And that was just on the main page. So now it is formatting. That'll take, oh yeah, that one's already done already. So there we go. And there is my array of four devices showing three terabytes. So now I can transfer stuff over. We will go into tower here. Interestingly, it's still showing my files. Let's try to open something, see what happens. Oh, cool. So my files actually stayed there. Very nice, but we will go ahead and transfer something over. Uh, I did a thumb drive test earlier and I have a folder of it. So we'll grab that copy. Go ahead and move it over to tower here and paste. And obviously we're not gonna get the best speeds, but also this is a pretty small file. So yeah, it didn't even pop up because they were so small, but they save in there on there. It's a pretty good little NAS. Again, it's got a little bit of a fan sound, but it's pretty quiet. And it's just perfect for this situation. Uh, yeah, it's about $300, I think, but I'm using it for storing all of those laser files, all those 3D print files. And it's just gonna be nice because then I can have my library, I can curate it the way I want. If I download a file one time, sometimes say on Maker World, which is a Bamboo Studios 3D printing service, like where they uh, host files and stuff, I could come in here and I could be like, oh, I want this book nook, let me download it. And then I printed it and then I wanna use it again later. And then for some reason the person's removed it or it's been removed or whatever, and I can't get to it. Now I can just keep every single thing I print as long as it, you know, prints it all right. Same thing with the laser files. Uh, most SVGs are pretty small, but I can just save so much stuff on there. And it's right out here in the garage. I don't have to worry about, you know, running some sort of network out here. I just do it pretty much between these two, although it is doing the you know ethernet over power line. It's just nice because I have a dedicated one. And if I go somewhere and say, you know, I don't wanna lug one of my hard drive NASs that's kind of heavy and stuff, if I'm going to a craft fair, or uh, I want to go to the high school and help them set up their 3D printers and lasers, I can just unplug this NAS, I take the power strip, I take the power brick and uh, you know a piece of ethernet cable or something, and then I've got everything to ready to go. And I can set up a little local network between my device and the thing with like a travel router or something. And I'm, you know, golden. Just give it my phone's connection. And I've just got this nice little portable NAS. They do have better portable NASs out there, but those are way more expensive. And honestly, this thing is pretty solid. So nice little thing. Um, yeah, I know this isn't the greatest NAS video ever, but 
This is just my opinion from someone that doesn't really know what they're doing. You saw me kind of fumble through that, but everything's going great. The temperatures are running nice, 53 Fahrenheit, sorry. It's slowly warming up out here, but not as much as I'd like. And you know, it's just, it's great. I would um, write down your Unraid license and stuff because your operating system is on a thumb drive. So, you know, it's only gonna last so long, probably last couple of years, but just something to be aware of. Again, you could try experimenting, putting a different uh, RAID management OS or whatever on here, but I think the Unraid's pretty great and you do get the uh, Unraid OS starter license for a year and then you can decide what you wanna do from there.